Good morning and happy Tuesday morning to you all. I'm starting off with this picture sent to me by my subscriber, Stacy. Apparently, this is in a bookshop on the top seller's stand. Oh, my goodness. All right, you guys, we have a lot to cover. Let's jump in and get there, shall we? Let's go. We're going to start off with King Charles and Queen Camilla because on Sunday, they went to church at St. Mary Magdalene. We know that that's, you know, in Norfolk and yeah. First of all, I love Camilla's hat. <laughs> and um, I think it's very telling that in these pictures, they appear so relaxed with everything that's going on. They don't show the strain and the stress of what's going on. By the way, the lady behind Camilla is her sister, just FYI. This article, according to this article, there were some discussions over the last week with William and Buckingham Palace, how they're going to handle this whole thing with Omid. And they're saying that all options are on the table, including legal ones. So Charles is discussing the situation with his senior advisor while carrying out his duties. And, you know, he's you know, doing his thing. Anyway, he's going to stay in Sandringham. He, apparently, he's going to be returning to London. He has a lot going on this week, including the Charity Carol Christmas concert at Westminster Abbey. You know, I'm excited to see that. I wonder if Catherine will play the piano again. Ooh. Let's move on now to Zara and Mike Tyndall. Look at these pictures. Oh my God, I just love this couple. They're so freaking cute. They were in the Australian Women's Weekly Magazine. Look at that. Look at this. Oh, I just love these two. I'm just going to stare. I'm going to let the pictures go by. Uh, a big thank you to Remulade Sauce for all the information uh, from what Zara was wearing. Now, while she was there, she gave an interview, Zara did, and she talked about how her and her grandmother had bonded over horses and how much she misses her grandmother, of course. You know, the queen was her grandmother and Zara was the eldest granddaughter. You know, Zara said that when she was going to do the horseback riding as a professional career, that the queen actually encouraged her. She said, I'm quoting, she very much knew what was going on in my career as I was growing up. You got to see her real passion and love for horses and that side of her. And um, yeah, now we know that the queen had 13 great grandchildren, but I don't know. I think maybe because Zara was number one, that kind of took precedence in her life. All right, we're going to go back to King Charles. I love this story. Apparently, they took curtains from Buckingham Palace and gave them to people who make kimonos. And so they took the curtains. It, it reminded me of The Sound of Music, where she took the, you know, the curtains and turned it into clothing. Exactly. I, just unbelievable. So there's definite different colors of fabric. There's blue floral, vintage rose, and burnt orange designs. And they were hung during Elizabeth II's reign, but was repurposed by students at the King's Foundation. And the King uh, suggested it. And some fabulous photos came out of the kimonos. I think they're gorgeous. Now, of course, looking at the blue and white one, people were kind of wondering if it was made from curtains that uh, were formerly hanging earlier. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on to Princess Catherine now. This is just, if this is true, I think this is adorable. She apparently took Princess Charlotte, who's now eight, and Prince Lou, who's five, to a studio visit for the show Strictly Come Dancing. It was a rehearsal at the L Street Studios, and they met Tess Daly and Claudia Winkleman. They're the presenters of the show. And apparently, the kids were given scoring paddles and uh, were allowed to score some of the dancing. I just think that's hilarious. It's being reported the kids got to see the costume department, then they stood on a balcony that overlooks the dance floor, uh, and that the kids are huge fans, so they were very delighted to be there. Apparently, allegedly, Catherine took pictures of the children in the judges' seats, and everybody was very polite and sweet. Love it. Moving on. Next up, this is kind of an interesting story. Apparently, it's being reported that Andrew, Prince Andrew, is very keen for Beatrice and Eugenie to become working royals. 
Hmm. Uh, Andrew apparently wants that, and uh, but there may not be any roles for them per se. There was a public opinion poll done according to this article that shows that there's absolutely no public appetite for Andrew to return to life as working royals. So I guess he's wanting his daughters to do it. Hmm. No, I find that interesting for the simple fact that Eugenie recently put out a statement where she praised Charles and William. Hmm. Move it on. All right, let's move on now to Omid Scobie. I showed you yesterday in the video where he said that Piers said that Harry and Meghan should be burned alive at the stake, but come to find out that's not what he said at all. Same, he has trouble with the truth. So it's the same thing. Apparently in his book, Omid Scobie claimed that Taylor Swift was offered to perform at King Charles's coronation, but turned it down. Okay, well, okay, she turned it down, but he didn't put down the fact that she was performing a show in America. It was a sold out show as far, you know, for her Eras tour. She was in Nashville the night of the coronation, but there you go. This is exactly what everybody's talking about. He just ignores the fact that she had a sold out tour and goes, well, she, she didn't want anything to do with the king, but that's not true. This is the kind of sensational stuff he puts in his book that upsets people. Now, at the same time, the Swifties, as they're called, also pointed out that Taylor Swift refused to do a podcast with Meghan Markle when Meghan Markle sent her a handwritten note and he left that completely out of the book. Now, let me just say the Swifties said, and I'm quoting, he really, really, really doesn't want to start with Taylor. He thought the royal family was tough. He has not seen what enraged Swifties can do. Should have asked somebody, dude. Uh, yeah, I agree. Her fans are die hard. You think Harry and Meghan's fans are something? Oh my. Yep. Moving on to Meghan, uh, her talent agency, WME, is apparently, they're claiming, horrified and exasperated because there's never-ending scandal with Meghan Markle. And everything that they try to do is just going down the drain. They're claiming that there are potential deals on the table that are going to vanish if they haven't already. Yep. And in the meantime, the same A-listers that Megan is desperate to be with are apparently shunning her. <laughs> They've distanced themselves. Well, that's been going on. That's nothing new. But um, people think the book is scurrilous, that it lacks facts, that it's built for harnessing a soap opera relationship. It's no good for Megan and Harry's mutations. And the fact that they're unwilling to come out and speak out against it speaks volumes, doesn't it? Because if they speak out against it and they helped, Omid's going to pounce. But by not speaking out, it looks like they did help. I mean, it's a no-win situation. And a blind item came out, you guys, saying that Megan is not going to come out and help Omid, that there are plenty of other authors out there to write the next hit piece. I totally believe that. Now, you got to feel bad for WME. They're making, well, they're, you know, they're getting paid well, but they keep putting out these puff pieces. Harry and Megan are torn over their Christmas because Megan has a hard line in the stand. She doesn't want to spend it with the royals. They're butting heads over their Christmas plans. And Harry is trying to convince Megan to swallow her pride and spend this festive period in England. You know, he'd like to see Beatrice and Eugenie and pop in to see the king. Uh-huh. And I agree with this article. That invite is withdrawn before it was even issued. I think if the family even had an inkling that they were softening, that Charles might have said, you know what? They haven't been here since 2018. Let's go ahead and invite them. Let's have them in. Uh, Omid Scobie's book has scuttled that. If there was any chance of them having any kind of a rapprochement over Christmas, it went right out the window. There is no way that Charles Charles and William will allow that. Nope. Another person who was really upset by this book was Sophie because Omid said that she was bigoted. Apparently, you have to be into chat shows. You have to know uh, Oprah. And if you don't, you're a bigot. So yeah, it's being reported that this book is an exercise in bridge burning because sweeping judgments like calling Sophie a bigot is a new tactic and it's just not going over where people love Sophie. 
For those of you who are unaware, it's being reported that the Dutch version not only names the quote unquote royal racists, but there's an extra like chapter in there. There's all this stuff. Interesting. Very interesting. Now, sources are telling the Times that Scobie's agent sent the draft in to the publisher with Charles and Catherine's names in it. I'm not kidding. Now, the Times, of course, has this great headline piece. There you go. Author's agent sent draft manuscript naming royals in race row. So as the investigation is going on, this is what's coming out. You know, it's it's come out. All of this drama, and it's come out that Omid did send a draft of the Endgame manuscript naming two racists to the Dutch translator, okay? So first he claimed this was the problem, then he claimed that was the problem. Now it's coming out what he did. They asked him on TV the other day if he wanted to apologize, and he goes, no, I didn't do anything wrong. Well, come to find out he did. So what did he do? He left the UK, he ran to LAX, he uh, checked into, or he's, he ate at the Sunset Tower Hotel where Clark Gable and Marilyn Monroe and, you know, Zsa Zsa Gabor were regulars. So what happened? He ran to LA. He ran, I wouldn't be surprised if he was meeting with Harry and Meghan. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Uh-huh. Like the cat's out of the bag. You're caught. Oh my God. So again, here comes Thomas Markle. Now remember, Thomas got that nasty letter from his daughter. He put it away and said nothing about it for six months until five of Megan's friends leaked to People Magazine about this letter and made it sound like it was this loving, caring letter, which of course we found out later on it wasn't. So Thomas Markle is pointing out the fact that Megan hasn't said one word about this letter with the king and why not what's going on he says it's very odd and the fact that they are not public publicly distancing themselves strikes him as very unusual i agree gb news is even asking why haven't harry and megan cleared up the misunderstanding by their own admission the royal family isn't racist that's what harry said and as far as the Dutch version being different than the UK version, in the Dutch version of his book, Omid says that William is heartless. He doesn't say that in the UK version or the other versions of the book. The Dutch version of the book says that Harry had to find his own way to the Queen's bedside because he wasn't invited on the chartered flight. Of course, the rest of us know that the flight sat on that freaking tarmac for over an hour because they were waiting for Harry, who was late. They finally decided to go without him because Meghan was having a fit because Charles told her she wasn't welcome there. Harry and Meghan had already put out a statement saying that they would be traveling together. Yep. Miss Akua from GB News was on with a guest, and this man said exactly what everybody is thinking, thank God. Listen to this. Well, I think um, Meghan Markle is a very sick individual. But she's not here to defend herself, but no. she has said that she has mental health issues, so I don't know. She clearly she has. Denied. I think she's got real mental health issues because she manages to get offended by the most inoffensive things. And she was welcomed wholeheartedly into the royal family. The wedding she got was in no way diminished as a result of her being from an ethnic minority or anything like that. She was celebrated and yet she bit the hand that fed her. She bit the people that put their protective cloak around her. And she kicked the institution in the shins. I don't understand what's wrong with that woman. What's wrong with this woman? She's angry because Harry got cut off by his dad. That's what's going on. I mean, seriously. This whole story with Megan and Obed is an ever-evolving story. But let me point something out to you. Megan is always on stage. Every picture, especially when she's kissing somebody on the cheek, her lips are never on the person's cheek, ever. She's always looking for that camera, making sure she has the exact shot, always trying to be perfect, like at all times. This is her downfall, you guys, seriously. All right, you guys know what I'm looking for. Put those comments down, make them good. Hit the like button. 
Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you've already done that, double check, make sure you're still subscribed. For those of you who've donated to my coffee fund, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day. Thank you.